Hi! Hello! It's been a while since you've seen my face on my channel. Um, and that is because today is kind of a special video. Today I will be redrawing something that I drew in 2018, I believe. Um, and that is a drawing of Loki, specifically from the Agent of Asgard run, like the end of the Young Avengers run and then into Agent of Asgard, um, and then the Loki main title. I just really, really liked that run. I found it super, super interesting. I'm really, really fond of uh, Loki as a character as far as uh, the more recent stuff that has been done um, in the comics. The new series for Loki is streaming, and I haven't really watched it yet, um, but I've seen some interesting stuff coming out of it, so I'm curious. Um, but I hope you enjoy today's video. I hope you enjoy today. I, me going through uh, my cosplay stuff. Actually, I keep this on display. <laughs> it's not the best piece of cosplay, but I made it, so I keep it on display. Um, and I decided to put it on for y'all today. So I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> hey, voiceover Jess here. So I started off this drawing immediately knowing that the anatomy from my first drawing was really wonky. And so when I did the sketch, I had to find a bunch of refs um, of people looking over their shoulder because I knew that the spine was too straight in the first version and the head was too big. There was a lot going on actually in the first version and I decided that I just couldn't look at it until I got to the part where I was confused about any compositional things like the hands um, and then later when I'm color picking from it to get the same colors because it was just confusing me to look at it. So instead I went and looked up pictures of people looking over their shoulder to try and figure out the curve of the spine because I needed this nice S curve while the neck where the neck was kind of like moving back and then the spine was coming curving forward and the shoulder was moving forward and I needed to see that in real life examples and not look at the original version of this drawing for a little bit um and so that process was kind of tedious and boring because it involved a lot of me looking at refs and trying different things. Um, so I kind of just like started with the sketch already done here and moved on to um, inking. And again, I use those pencil brushes uh, from Clip Studio. They just, um, if it didn't come with Clip Studio, I think some of these didn't. I think these are actually the Hebe pens. Uh, they are the Hebe, I use one Hebe pen and um, then the rest of them are pencils. Uh, they're free on Clip Studio Assets if you would like to. And it's, I think it's Hebe, H-I-B-I. Um, I really recommend those. Otherwise I'm just using uh, any, the, I think the, one of my biggest brushes is actually the color pencil brush for shading and stuff. I really like that brush. I like the texture. Um, so once again, Clip Studio assets free. I don't think I've paid for one yet. Um, there are a couple that I'm kind of interested in buying, uh, but so far I have only used the free ones. And that's another different thing that I did for this drawing. In the first drawing, I was using Photoshop and I have been using Clip Studio a lot more now and I kind of prefer it for drawing as I think I mentioned in my last video. So I decided to work in Clip Studio for this even though I worked in Photoshop for the first one. And I think that kind of like, I guess, goes to show that it doesn't really matter what program you're using. Um, you can still make something awesome. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I really like Loki and specifically the end of the Young Avengers run Loki. I recommend the Young Avengers overall, by the way. That's a great run, um, especially for the girls, the gays, and the theys. Um, highly recommend. But 
I really liked the character development at the end of that run into Agent of Asgard. I think it got abandoned a little bit after Agent of Asgard, which is kind of sad, uh, but I still really like that whole run and I think it then goes into President Loki which is an interesting uh choice but also good I just I really connected to this run I think especially because it was around the time I started to come out as non-binary to people and there was a character who was non-binary and like of course it's not perfect representation and this character isn't perfect but I think it was just nice to see it all. I remember that I cosplayed Loki. That's why I made those uh, horns for a convention really soon after that run. I want to remake my uh, Loki horns actually uh, using 3D printed base just because I think it'll be more lightweight. Those are, they're not heavy because I used air dry clay, but they're heavy enough and to keep the foam from irritating my forehead, I actually had to put this pleather material, which was stupid. I should have used any other fabric because it makes my forehead sweat like crazy. But I also had to pad the inside because I found when I was wearing it with the wig, it just sort of like the where the horns were dug these circles into my forehead that hurt so bad. I had like a splitting migraine. Uh, after, because I was working at that convention, um, selling stuff, so I was just like, please, what have I done? And part of that was that the straps were kind of tight, because I think I also was stupid and made it for, like, my normal hair, um, and I was wearing a wig at that convention, so. Silly, silly me, and that's why I kind of want to remake it using the 3D printed base, and then just sand sand and fill for days <laughs> sand and plasti dip for days before i uh spray paint it gold again and weather it again but i still enjoy my original set of horns and i keep them on display as i said before because i really love this character um and i'm i'm like i said i'm kind of interested in watching the series but uh, streaming, the price cost, I am very poor. <laughs> um, but I, and I also have feelings about Disney Marvel live action stuff, getting kind of burnt out on it, and also Disney in general, I have feelings about. But we'll see. I mean... If I do end up watching it, I'm definitely not watching it right now uh, as it goes on. It would probably be a big binge um, rather than watching it episode by episode. So I am getting spoilers, but I mean, like, I am i don't really mind a lot of spoilers. If something is a mystery, I mind spoilers, but if it's just like random plot stuff, I, I truly do not mind spoilers. Um, like horror movie spoilers and mystery movie spoilers are bad, but like TV show spoilers for just general stuff, I don't know, it just doesn't bother me. Um, that's why I'm kind of the worst about not spoiling stuff for people. I'm like, please do not ask me about the thing. Just don't ask me about it. Just don't even, don't even mention it because I am really bad at controlling my excitement about stuff. Um, don't know if that's the ADHD or just me, but that should just be the tagline for people with ADHD. Don't know if that's just me or if it's the ADHD, but <laughs> um, I, I get really excited and I want to talk about the thing. And so I'm like, just don't ask about it. D don't look at me. Don't, don't talk to me about it. Um, and so we'll see if I enjoy this. I, like I said, I haven't been minding the spoilers and seeing what people are talking about. I really liked, uh, Thor Ragnarok. I really liked the choice of, uh, Loki space floozy. That was a choice. Um, it was a good choice, but <laughs> I very much enjoyed that movie. 
uh, I, I kind of like the more lighthearted stuff, like something that's lighthearted but has heart, if that makes sense. I got really, really sick of gritty realism uh, with superhero movies. I, I don't know if I've talked about this before on this channel, but I started reading comic books when I was 12. <laughs> And I started off with DC stuff and indie stuff, but specifically Batman, so like, edgy. Uh, but there's a lot about Batman and stuff that was kind of camp and kind of stuff that's left over from a time when the comics code existed. Um, I, I think the kind of like recent uh, Batman T, uh, if you know, you know, it involves Catwoman and things he's not allowed to do for Catwoman. Um, but if you if you know about that, you understand that there's like weird <laughs> residual stuff. Uh, there's other acts they cannot perform actually, which I think is really funny. Um, that there's certain stuff that just doesn't exist in the DC universe. I would look it up if I were you because it's truly entertaining. Um, but I definitely grew up reading those comics and was just kind of alienated by the live action films after a while. Um, I think I just like the we live in a post Dark Knight world and it is it truly is something because everything is either like like the Dark Knight or it is compared to the Dark Knight. And I don't know what to do with that. I truly don't. We live in a society bottom text. Um, and then in 2011 through 2013, I was super into the MCU. Uh, just got really into the Marvel uh, movies and read a lot of the Marvel comics. Um, kind of switched over. But I was also starting to get into indie comics, and a lot of stuff that came out of uh, Image, like, I think I had started actually with Dark Horse Comics um, overall, and then moved into DC, but then Image was just putting out the bangers, and so I started reading a lot more Image comics, I started reading a lot more online comics, I really, really love the stuff that's coming from my peers to be honest, some great stuff coming from online comics and I super, super recommend going to like Tapas or uh, please don't make fun of how I say that. <laughs> Tip, tapas, tapas, tapas. Um, or Webtoons and see what people are making and, you know, support small creators because they're, they're doing it. They're making the content, you know? Don't make me tap the sign that, you know, small creators are making the content you want to see, uh, not huge corporations. But that being said, I, I do super enjoy some of the, you know, Marvel stuff. Like I said, I enjoyed this Loki run a lot. I enjoyed uh, the live action um, movies, some of them. I have seen every Thor movie. I'm not proud. <laughs> I'm especially not proud that I watched Thor The Dark World. Like, people are gonna wanna square up. But I saw that movie in theaters, and it was longer than I expected, but somehow not long enough to make, like, to make it, like, I don't know, hit in any particular way. That movie rambled on about nothing for a really long time. I think the only things I really enjoyed about it were the character relationships, um, and reactions to certain characters being no more um but otherwise it truly was a time i think what made it worth it for me uh was actually there's like one scene where loki like shoots this ship they're on out of the hole and it's very dangerous and crazy and then he just goes ta-da and it's super fast and it's almost like missable uh, that was my ringtone on my friend's phone for me <laughs> for a really long time uh, because it was the only part of the movie I left. <laughs>
or like had an emotion about for a while. Uh, that movie is questionable. Um, but then Ragnarok came out and I was super nervous about it. Uh, and I remember my my friend coming up to me and being like, no, you're gonna love this movie. And I'm like, is this gonna make me a Loki stan again? And they were like, it is, it truly is. And they were correct. But also there were tons of lovable characters. Valkyrie was in it, which was a lovely, a lovely gift to all. Um, Kate Blanchett was in that outfit. TM, 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 mm -hmm. eyebrows. Uh, I don't know if I particularly cared for I don't know, I have mixed feelings about how they hand handled uh, Hela. I, d I mean, like, I liked her function in the story that was being told in that movie. That's the thing about the dissonance between, like, the comics and the, m the movies, right? Like, I understand why they make certain choices. I just, sometimes I miss stuff. Oh, I have been rambling about Marvel instead of talking about my process, but you y'all have seen me render stuff before. I definitely spent uh, a lot of time rendering this in my usual style. There's a lot less dramatic lighting in this, um, partially because I was, you know, trying to match the original image and my style was different then, and I use dramatic lighting far less often. Um, but I definitely rendered it even more uh when i wasn't recording because i'm foolish and i came back from a lunch break and i was rendering and then i was like oh my googly gosh i i was supposed to be recording that um that's what i get for eating a sandwich i guess i hope the final image looks better when this video is rastered because for some reason when it shows you the final image it looks like it's five pixels and i don't know why because the image is saved at a lot higher uh pixel rate than five but i hope this looks better thank you so much for watching i hope you have a great day and please like comment subscribe if you want bye Mwah!